Hello, my name is Troidar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Philosopher's Mausoleum in Minecraft. Let's get started. So firstly, let's take a look at our Philosopher's Mausoleum. Of course, this will be the upgrade from the Heroes Mausoleum. The, this also will be upgraded by the Emperor's Mausoleum, but that's for a future video. For today, we're taking a look at the mid-sized Philosopher's Mausoleum, a nice stately structure suitable for uh, a Philosopher to commemorate him. Like so, as you can see, of course, we have an integrated beacon into, the, into this particular model. As well, and the general plan of this follows the uh, mausoleum at uh, Halicarnassus. Of course, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, but this is a, this is a more a smaller budget-sized version of that. Done in a, in a Roman style, of course, with the, with the um, uh, podium at the bottom here, and of course the stairs and everything, and the Corinthian designs for that. So if we land here and take a look at our mausoleum, of course we can see that it's sealed with a nice tough door, but if we want to break that and go inside, we can see we do have a, a nice large chamber in here, of course, with a diamond sarcophagus suitable to hold the remains of our philosopher in here and a chest as well for that. A pretty nice resting place, I would think. And um, you know, like if you have uh, someone that you've lost that uh, you would like to commemorate with a mausoleum, of course, this would be an excellent structure to build somewhere in your own world. Uh, but now that we've got the tour out of the way, let's take a look at the uh, bill of materials. Not too bad considering its size. Uh, so what you're going to be needing is uh, uh, 1,532 blocks of a diorite, 801 blocks of tuff. 91 blocks of cobbled deep slate, uh, 2,282 blocks of cobblestone, 62 blocks of waxed cut copper, 152 cobblestone slabs, 18 deep slate tile slabs. For the sarcophagus, of course, you need 6 quartz slabs and 6 diamond blocks. 122 cobblestone stairs, 4 blocks of glowstone, 988 stone bricks. Uh, 400 stone brick stairs, 16 quartz stairs, uh, zero, zero eggs. I'm, I'm not sure how that got there, uh, but you don't need any of those. Uh, 30 blocks of red nether brick, 26 stone brick slabs, 36 blocks of gold ore, 9 iron blocks, of course, for the beacon there at the top, and one beacon. And uh, 2 blocks of nether wreck ore, 2 campfires for the braziers right out there at the front. That's what those are for. Uh, two chests, of course, for your uh, sarcophagus. Uh, and 18 blocks of a deep slate diamond ore to put on uh, as decoration for the uh, sarcophagus. So, I think I know where that egg came from. Mm. Anyway, uh, let, let us move on. So, the dimensions for the structure are as follows. The base is 17 by 26. It is 17 blocks wide across the front here, and 26 blocks wide across the back, and 52 blocks tall. So, uh, so make sure uh, that you have that space available for your build. And uh, we will now begin the tutorial. Although I will say, firstly, that uh, this world here is going to be available for download uh, for Java and Bedrock versions. If you want to come here and take a look at any of the slices yourself, as we go, in case anything in the video is unclear, you can always just, you know, download it and take a closer look. But I do try to be thorough throughout the video. So the first thing that you need to do is make a big uh, rectangle of 17 by 26. And in front of that, we want to have, um, after three blocks of cobble, we then want to have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blocks of a cobblestone stairs here at the front and then everything else is cobble. All right, next slice up, we then want to have the cobblestone stairs, but the same width, just set them back one block. And for this, go around and put uh, a diorite on top of that. And then more diorite on top of that for two blocks. Just like so to get the foundation set. Like this here. Uh, on the next phase, uh, you want to, to go around and put cobblestone on everything. Uh, but here, we of course, once you go up two blocks of uh, cobblestone stairs, 
go back one block of cobblestone and then put two more flights of uh, cobblestone stairs right here, just like that. And then this here for a total depth of uh, five, five blocks. Just like so. And then back here is going to be the inner floor for the foundation of the, the mausoleum on the inside here. Uh, so from the back, you count in uh, two blocks here, just straight along the center line right here. Like if we do our build here and we draw a center line and split it in twain right here, uh, one half of this building will be identical to the other half as we go. Let me just show you this here from the top down to start with. And of course, you can see you need your deep slate diamond doors. You need five of those, and then five along here, find five along the front. And then, of course, in the middle of this here is where we're going to be building our sarcophagus. To lay our philosopher to rest, broke that block. And uh, let me. Um, I think you can see how to count out the rest of this. So from here, you just got three blocks this way, and then three blocks back that way, and then two here, three here, one there, and three across the front. And then all these blocks on this side are a mirror image of the blocks that we placed on that side over there, just like so. And we will go on here to the next phase. All right, so here we want to place the foundations for our little uh, braziers out front. We have the block of cobble and four stone bricks, stairs facing inwards like so. Behind that, we want to have four crosses of tough blocks right here, just like so, spaced out one apart from each other. Behind that, leave a space of two, and then we want to have a line of tough for the foundation and a bit of diorite for the uh, doorway uh, here. And of course, if you want to leave your, uh, your mausoleum open, you can remove the tuff in the middle. This is just to seal it off. If you want to do that as well, you can put a uh, doorway in there of some type. Uh, along here, then just leave one block of space on top of the platform, and behind that, make it tough. With those blocks there, and on the inside, of course, it's, it's tough blocks again. And these blocks back here, they don't, it doesn't matter what these are. Uh, you could leave that hollow if you wanted to because they're not visible. And of course here we want to put in our uh, coffin and then build the sarcophagus around it with the quartz and the diamond blocks. Just like so. Only the best for our philosopher. Uh, over here, of course, we want to have now upside down stone brick stairs and then a block of nether rack here. Or conversely, if you don't want the nether rack, you can put a campfire down there instead. All right, on top of the tuff you put down, we then want to put uh, stone brick stairs, just like so, on all four of these column bases. And then back here on top of our tuff, we want to have on the exterior a big line of stone bricks going all the way around. On the interior, we have some attached pilasters to the wall here, just like, just like so. Two blocks apart each for those. And then, of course, for our sarcophagus, we just want to have upside down quartz stairs. All right, next phase, a couple of uh, cobblestone slabs here. Just like so, and we now want to start building the columns for our, uh, our colonnade out front. And these are going to be six blocks tall, six blocks in total of diorite. So if you want to, you can go ahead and place six blocks of diorite on top of all four of these, like so. And behind here, we now have a, a pattern that we're going to be doing in the wall. So you can see for every two blocks of uh, cobble, you're then going to place two blocks of tuff. Turn the corner, two blocks of cobble, then two blocks of tuff, two blocks of cobble, then two blocks of tuff. Keep following that pattern all the way around until we get to the back 
where, of course, we hit our center line, and we don't have an odd-numbered center line, so it's going to have to be three blocks of cobble, and then back to two blocks of tough and two blocks of cobble. Just like so, all the way around. And this is just a very simple technique we're using to get more uh, texture and depth on the wall um, and just have it still be a flat wall. So it, lo it looks pretty good from a distance. You can kind of see it off over there still. And that's the pattern we're going to be using. On the interior here, same deal for these diorite on the inside. You can go ahead and stack those up six blocks tall. And we want to have a slightly di a different pattern for the alternating for the tuff and the cobble on the interior here. I just went every other block on the interior here, for the most part, just like so. And to finish off your sarcophagus, we want two more diamond blocks and six quartz slabs on that. And uh, that'll be all of that for the sarcophagus. Or she can use the sarcophagus design for other things in your world, if you so choose. If you have another tomb somewhere else, or perhaps you just want a really nice box, you can use that design for that. Uh, back here again, next phase though, we it's, uh, it's all stone bricks. On the exterior, as you can see. On the interior, for the same as well. And a detail here for the doorway. Next level up. Same deal for the doorway, except you will notice we're now reversing the placement of the cobblestone and the tuff from this layer down here. So whatever you did with the cobblestone and the tuff on this first layer, reverse it for this next layer here. And this is how we're getting our brickwork pattern done. And of course that means we have three blocks of tuff at the back. And on the inside as well, you want to reverse the pattern from whatever you put down on this lowest course down here for this next one, just like so. All right, next phase. Uh, we're finishing off the doorway, beginning to, with a lintel of cobblestone and some upside down stone bricks. All the other slices uh, through here are, of course, just stone bricks on the interior and the exterior, just like so. Next phase again, over the doorway, we want to have just a straight line of upside down stone brick stairs. And for this course up here, just like so, what you did down here, repeat for this one up here. You can see we're we are reversing the tuff and the cobblestone from that layer down there and returning it to its original position. Just like so. And uh, this little technique for building walls and everything and decorating is, is, of course, applicable for any other build you want to use, not just this one. Uh, but I particularly like how the, uh, the stone bricks, the tuff, and the diorite work together for this. It provides just enough contrast uh, to, look, to look nice, and, but yet still be noticeable. Uh, same deal on the interior for the doorway, by the way, with the upside down stone brick stairs and everything. We want to have two blocks of diorite right here because we're, we're going to be making an arch out of diorite. So if you want to with your diorite, you can go ahead and build your arch like like that, like that there. All right, next phase, detail over the doorway, a bit of diorite and some stone brick slabs, and then just another layer of stone bricks behind that right there. All right, next phase, we have uh, reached six blocks tall for our uh, diorite column shaft. So, of course, we're going to be building our Corinthian capitals. And you know the drill. Uh, upside down, cobblestone stairs, and then stone brick stairs on top of this to represent our acanthus leaves. Just like so. And uh, one last slab here over the doorway. And repeat the same design for the doorway on both sides, by the way. Uh, same deal for the columns with upside down stairs and everything, like so. And down right there for our archway. Next phase here, like I told you, upside down stone brick stairs on top of the cobble. All of these, all four sides. Stone bricks for the uh, building itself, and then upside down stone brick stairs for all the pilasters in here. And your finished archway. Just a little, uh, just a little decorative niche for our sarcophagus to be slid into. I was going to place it in the center of the room, 
Uh, but uh, what, when I did that, when you walked in, you were you were already right up against it, so it was uh, it was too uh, cramped. So I so I moved it all the way back against the wall. I think it looks nice there. Uh, next phase. Now that we are done with our Corinthian capitals, you know what comes next: the entablature. So right here, we're doing the entablature out of tuff. By the way, as you can see, we want to have these lintels made out of tuff connecting with the building for the pediment that we're about to put on top of it. Just like so. On the interior and the exterior, all tough. Uh, and just fill in with uh, cobblestone or whatever block you have in the spaces between those. Just like, just like so here. All right, next phase, uh, slap diorite on top of all that tough that you just laid down. Go ahead and uh, cover it over on the interior in here as well. Just like that there. On the interior as well. Big line of diorite. Uh, next, uh, put cobblestone on top of all that diorite. And then on the edges of that, we then want to put upside down stone brick stairs to make our cornice. And of course, we want to have a... Uh, Stone brick slab hanging out on this section here for the raking cornice. And then just wrap your stairs upside down all the way around the building in a big, big square. Just like so. Uh, on the interior as well. Make a big square, upside down stone brick stairs. Like that there. All right, next phase, a little bit more complicated. Uh, so these are the details here we want to have. Uh, as you can see, this here, this here is a full block, so that means these here on the sides are slabs. So we want to go around and put cobblestone slabs right here on all the edges, and then you want to put a layer of cobblestone behind that, just like so, all the way around the building. Dow right here for the tympanum in the middle. And a red nether brick and deep slate tile here, of course, for the roof tiles. And a little bit of, uh, um, um, it's, uh, a what, wa waxed cut copper. Yes. I momentarily forgot what that was. Anyway, so many blocks to remember these days. Uh, on, on the interior here, though, we want to leave a space around the cornice. And just have that all be cobbled. But on the edges here, you can see we want to have four blocks of cobble stuck in the corners. This is also a good place if you want to hide some torches, by the way. Just stick those up here, wherever you want. Now over here, uh, next phase. More diorite in the middle here for the tympanum. Of course, that's what the, that's what the recessed triangular portion of the pediment is called. It's called the tympanum. And over here, oh, we have, uh, we have uh, st um, what, cobblestone slabs and then stone brick. And stone brick slabs going up a half slab at a time at that angle here. It's, uh, I think that's, a, it, it's about 18 degrees, I think. It's close as we can get to that anyway. And over here for the, the roof tiles, you can see we're alternating in the checkerboard pattern, the full blocks of red nether brick and the deep slate tile slabs, just like so. And behind this, of course, we have another layer. It's going to be stone bricks, just like so. And extend your dial right up on the interior as well. Next phase here, another block of uh, copper. Right here, uh, more details uh, for the roof tiles, just like so. They're following the same slope as the rest of the pediment is. Just like that there. And behind this, we want to wrap the whole thing around with a square of tuff. Now on the interior here, we're getting ready to put in a small rib vault, of course, which we're going to be doing out of uh, diorite for the ribbing, which we're beginning to form, beginning, be just beginning to form right here. All right, next phase. Right here, finishing off the, the tip top of our pediment. Everything coming to a nice little uh, point here. Well, you know, Minecraft. 
It's, a, it's as pointy as we can get. And we want to finish that off by connecting it with a, a ridge of cobblestone to the rest of the building, and, and that'll, that'll finish off the roof and everything. Till we get to the top, where of course there's a, there's a little bit more roof. Uh, behind that, you want a big square of diorite, just like so. And on the interior, of course, we're building our rib vaulting. So you want to have your diorite laid out like this here with stone bricks behind it. Now let's take a look at that from below. Just like so. All right, next phase, a bit of detail for a decorative uh, finial. At the front here, more copper. And we're going to be building the, the, the copper like that there. So if you want to go ahead and finish that off, you can. Uh, behind that, of course, for the building, uh, just uh, lay down a bunch of cobblestone. And we're doing another cornice layer of upside down stone brick stairs. Just like we did down here for this layer. Do that again, but up here. And more detailing. Of course, we're using a bit of gold ore as decoration for the ceiling. This is the old texture of gold ore my personal favorite for the ore but then the, the newer one looks okay of course if you want to get more fancy uh, and use uh you can use more diamond ore up there or perhaps some lapis or something expensive you can of course do that you can see our rib our diorite ribbing is meeting at the middle at a big x here that's how rib vaulting works like so And over here, of course, we are finishing that off, like this here, with a bit of glowstone, cobble, and gold ore. And we are now getting ready to put in more, more columns, as you can see here. Uh, so, you remember down here where we built these, uh, these tough crosses and then started building these columns? Well, we're going to be doing that again up here for, uh, what, 12? 12 columns? I think. Never do never do math when you're recording, but I think this is 12. And of course, uh, on top of the cornice, we want to put upside down cobblestone stairs all the way around. And behind that, uh, in, a, in, a, in an intercolumnation distance of one, is where we want to put our column bases, of course. Intercolumnation is the spacing between the columns. And of course, here you can see it's just one, one, one block. Just like so. And uh, let, let me land here and uh, break the door open. I go inside and see this, this is what your ceiling should be finished. Looking like here, very, very simple and small rib vault up here. Not too difficult. Uh, that, that will be the eventual medieval cathedral tutorial, whereupon they will be extremely difficult. Uh, but, but for this philosopher's uh, mausoleum, it's not too bad. Uh, so, uh, continue building the column bases just like we did before with the, the stairs and everything. Behind this, on top of the tuff, go around and put uh, a square of stone bricks. And then here, of course, you, 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 you know what this is. It, it's, a, it, it's a beacon base. Just like so, where you can go ahead and put down your beacon if you want to. Uh, this mausoleum is designed to only have a 3x3 a, a three three beacon in it. I don't think you can really fit a larger beacon in this particular design. Of course, that is going to be for the next one in the series, the Emperor's Mausoleum, of course. Of course, the Emperor gets a full-sized beacon in his mausoleum, but the Philosopher only gets a, a small level 1 beacon. Uh, so here for the diorite, you can go ahead and, uh, for all these blocks here, you can go ahead and stack these up 6 blocks tall of diorite. And behind that here, of course, you can see we have an alternating pattern, every other block, of diorite and tuff, just like we did before. Next phase up from that, a square of stone bricks. And then reverse the placement for the diorite and tuff on top of that, like you did before. Another square of stone bricks. And another reversal of diorite and tuff. Just like this here. Another square of stone bricks. And another reversal of diorite and tuff. And then another square of stone bricks. And of course your columns, the, the Corinthian capitals and the acanthus leaves, just like you did before, all upside down, cobblestone stairs and then stone brick stairs stacked on top of those. 
And it's like you've done there. A pretty quick several few phases. We're just going straight up in big box, so there's not too much to explain. So on top of that, you know what comes next, the entablature. And that is going to be done with a tough, like you see done here, and then just a cobblestone behind that. And of course, we want to attach it on top of our columns with a couple of blocks of tough, just like you see done here. Then on top of that, go around and put uh, diorite on the exterior, and you can leave it uh, stone bricks on the interior. Then on top of that, put down cobblestone and go around and put down your cornice. Of course, the upside down stone brick stairs here on top of the entablature representing a cornice. Just plain cobblestone on the interior though. And on top of that, uh, you then want to put uh, diorite in this pattern here because we're now starting to build up our, our, our pyramidal uh, roof design that we have on top of this particular mausoleum, which it's out of the render distance now, but you remember what it looked like from the tour that we did at the start. Uh, so here, just on the edges and in, in, in the middle, you want to put your diorite arranged like so, and then just stone bricks behind that. After that, you then want to make a big square of tuff and cobblestone and diorite. Another block tall here. And then the, the next phase after that, these little diorite finials, we want to finish those off, the ones in the middle like this and the ones on the corner like that. And behind that, we want to go back one block, put blocks of tuff on all four corners, then diorite, and then cobblestone or stone bricks behind that. Next phase up, we want to put tough again in a big square and then cobblestone behind that. Next phase after that, diorite, tough, and cobble. Uh, this phase here corresponds to what we did down here, by the way. You're building that again. You're just building it one block farther back on all sides. Uh, you also need to hang in this, this uh, block of cobblestone here on the interior here as a corbel. All right, so uh, tough and down, right? Just like so. And then no, cobblestone. Tough and cobblestone, just, just like so. And then the tough, the diorite and the cobblestone. And then lean your diorite again in for another corbel, like this here, on the interior. And then another square of tough and diorite. And then you know the drill. Diorite, tough, and cobblestone. And then just lean the entire thing in for one last square of cobble there. And then cap the whole thing off with uh, tough and diorite, like you see done here. And your entire roof should resemble something like this here. Very simple, basic, uh, basic pyramid design here at the top. On top of this, now we want to add a decorative uh, cut, a waxed cut copper Ecraterion statue. It's the last thing we're going to be doing. Uh, so here is the pattern for that. Just uh, lay these blocks of cut copper down on top of your mausoleum. Of course, make sure, make sure that uh, this way is facing the front, by the way. So I'll just turn around. So this way is facing the front. Probably should have got rid of the beacon for these last little steps here. And then this is the next set of blocks on top of that. Right there, the next set on top of that is a little curly tail on the back. It's like so. He has a, he's one he has one leg raised up a little bit higher than the other. And then here we have the uh, the bit of the wings on top. What the statue? I believe the statue is a I think it's a griffin. What it's supposed to be. Well, you know Minecraft. We we only got a couple of blocks to make our griffin statue, so you have to. You have to use a lot of imagination for this particular design. You could do more detail with uh, stairs and half slabs if you want to. Uh, but uh, these days, generally speaking, when I make statues, I, I dispense with the stairs and half slabs. There's so much extra work, it's generally not worth it. Just like so. Of course, we can see our wings forming over here and our head right there. Two more blocks for the head and a few more blocks here for the wings. And then uh, two last blocks here 
for the wingtips right there. And your uh, waxed cut copper Griffin Acroterion statue is decorating the top of your mausoleum. And once you have done that, your philosopher's mausoleum will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Philosopher's Mausoleum. Remember that this world is available for download in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.